Mr. Burks, you claim to be more than $26,000 in debt due to child support for the defendant, Ms. Brown, who you say is definitely not your biological daughter. You are here to prove that in court so you can return home and get the debt erased from your record. Ms. Brown, you state that for 30 years you've known only one man to be your father and you are devastated that he is now claiming you are not his biological daughter. Ms. Brown, how do you feel about Mr. Berg's denying that you are his daughter after all these years? I am hurt. I'm disappointed. I don't even know how to feel. I can't even believe somebody even have a question of how I feel. I'm 30 years old. 30 years old! And I have to deal with this? You know, and then, then he brings up talking about it was a one-night stand with my mom and all that kind of stuff like that. It wasn't no one-night stand. He had a relationship with her and he know it. You know it. It hurts me so much and I have a lot of pain. You know, it, it, it's ridiculous to me. I'm just hurt. I'm just hurt inside. I really am. All your life, you've known him to be your father. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. And it's just like, how could you come up with this? He just crazy, deranged or something. It doesn't make no sense. Your Honor, this was, this nah. was like 25, you know, 30 years ago. I'm 25 years old. I'm in the military. And I had a career to protect. And not only that, I had a wife. And I, I was starting hmm. my life out trying to start it over. I met a mother at a restaurant in the drive through window. So I was young, trying to, you know, get my Mac on. I'm Mac Daddy. And so she said, well, meet me, come back, you know, this, you know, after work. And I said, get off work. So I went back after work. And uh, I picked her up, and we went to the hotel. I did my thing, but I, I didn't. I did not. Uh, you didn't. Okay. Y'all had, okay. had a relationship. Yeah, they had a relationship. I didn't have no relationship. Yeah, you did. Yes, you, you wasn't did. there. You How went, you know? You wanted to. You wasn't even there. Cause she told me. I she know for lie. a fact because she's not gonna lie. I dropped her she's off on at the house. She's and not Hold on, Miss Brown. Let me hear what he's saying. And so, did you see her again? Maybe three months later, I went to see her. But then, like I said, I had a wife. And I was in the military, so, you know, I didn't want to be having no adultery charge put against me while I'm in for trying to protect my career. After that happened, my, my wife and I went back together. I'm back in the house with her. My, I'm at work. My ex-wife get a phone call. It's her mother on the phone saying she's pregnant by me. So my house get tore up all over again. Bam, I'm out the door again. So in the process, she said I'm the father, so I go find her. I go talk to her. And so when I did found out that she was, I went to the hospital, but I got it. My name is not on the birth certificate. I'm not a father. That's evidence you'd like to present? Yes, ma'am. Ron, will you pass that to me, please? Yes, but my name is on the child support papers. This is Miss Brown's birth certificate listed yes. as father? No one. None. Nobody up there. Because I'm not the father. And yet you also have a paper that indicates that there is an order establishing the parent-child relationship and you are responsible for child support. Yeah. So, at some point, did you acknowledge paternity or was there a court case that you didn't show up? Exactly. Okay. That's what happened. So, I you're named the, the father by away. default. I was away. They had the court without me even being there. They had already been to court, determined I, I was behind a real rich of $40,000. I'm thinking, man, look at here. How I'm gonna pay $40,000 all these years? And why would you wait till uh, she gets 17 years old to file that? Why would you wait till I'm say, I'm like to say I'm not to me? the child? Huh? <laughs> 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 if you had no debt right now, <laughs> if you were so disrespectful. Yeah, yeah I am, because that's you why. just disrespect me. See, you talk about like me now. all the time, running around. Like talk... Yeah, exactly. Hold exactly. on, Ms. Brown, I want to hear that. You've been hearing rumors and he's been going around town. He cusses me out, talk back I know, cuss. And I, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. This type of interaction here was not the nature of your relationship, was it? In the beginning, it was when I was young. Because you know, when you're young, you don't have a say-so over nothing. When he came and got me when I was uh, little, it was just like, go with your dad. You know what I'm saying? But as I gradually got older, then I, you know what I'm saying, it caused a fun conflict. He always get into, with, get into it with me all the time. Here, take this. She don't look like Because it. I look like, look at like this picture. This is, this My children are dark skin. Evidence. She light skin. Does she look like me? Hold on. This evidence is what, Miss Brown? That's evidence to prove that we look like, look, y'all look up those noses. Know. this. No. And he want to go around saying I'm, because I'm bigger than everybody. You sound like a fool for saying that. You are. That's the only thing you got? 
You hold this on. is a picture of you and Mr. Burke's other daughter. Yes. One and you're saying you see the family similarity without With the nose this to me, the nose is I don't like, think so. Lips are like like that. They all and talk so, hold on, Mr. Burks. I want to yes. understand yes, this. Yes, ma'am. You're saying you've maintained throughout the years that this is not your biological child. Right. I knew that something was wrong. But you also said you were trying to, to protect your military career. How is accepting her part of protecting your well, career? Because, you know, I, didn't, I wanted to keep it hush-hush. I wanted to deal with it myself. I wanted to make sure I went to her mother, I gave her money, I bought diapers and everything. So, try. basically, you didn't want the fact that you had cheated on your wife to come out. Exactly, yeah. Right, okay. But you never accepted deep down that she was your biological daughter. Right. That's right. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Her whole life, she's lived 30 years thinking you're her father. I never talked to her about that until recently. Until the last maybe nine years, she was pretty good up until then. Then she started, I don't know what happened to her, she started getting very uh, disrespectful, uh, demanding money. You know, I bought her a car. That's a lie. I bought That's her a car. Lie. Gave That's it to a lie. With the I don't even ask them for nothing. One car is all you bought me. Man, One car, and then it broke down. I had to put money into it. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, you all can just yell and scream at each other all day and we'll never get to the results. I'm trying to understand this, really. Because when I look at the two of you, quite frankly, the interaction is so... It's like you're strangers. Yeah, right, that's it. That's I what, don't... That's how, I, that's how I, 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 I honestly can say, Ron... That's why I did have doubts. Hundreds of families I've helped, I've never really seen this much complete disconnection between a possible father and a daughter at this age. So I want to understand how this happened, how we got here. Miss Brown, how did you get this news? When I was, when I was around about 22, 21, somewhere around there, one of my sisters told, um, told him that I liked the women. I was a lesbian. That's when the disrespect started. He didn't like that. He's supposed to claim to live his life as a pastor, all that stuff like that. He didn't like it. He talked bad to me. He was ugly on the phone. When he found that out, he was very disrespectful. And ever since that day, it's like we have a connection, but every time he get mad or something I tell him, he'll call me. He's a negative person. He, he expect me to call him and blow his phone up. I'm not going to do that because every time I talk to him, it's always drama. He gets into it with my other siblings or whatever, and he goes back, tell me. He gets into it with me, goes back. He, he's, he's mad at me, so he goes back and talk about me. He has the problem. It's him. And I'm not going to sit here, and I told him the last time we had an argument, I'm not going to sit here and be disrespected. I am 30 years old, and you are not going to disrespect me. Now, when I was little, I did not disrespect him. It didn't start that he found out the way I lived my lifestyle, and he didn't like it. I want to know the exact words he said when he said, I don't believe you're my biological daughter. It was a text that he sent. He said, when we got into it the last time we got into it, he sent out a text. He got, he gets mad and hang up our phone all the time. Right after that, when he got mad, he sent me a text. He sent me a text through my text message and said, we gonna see who you really are with a DNA test because you ain't none of mine. And that is what he texted me. Thinking the whole time, okay, he just mad because that's what it's been. But this, I was like, this? Now? This is what you do? Mr. Burks, why would you say this and, and why would you say it over a text message? You know, I've always believed that she was not my daughter. And I was just tired of living a lie. I want to know the truth. So let me understand this. You decide to accept this child, even though you don't believe she's your biological daughter, yeah. to basically save your military career. Yes. What exactly makes you think she's not your biological child? She didn't look like me. And, and, and from the very beginning... Uh, it wasn't a relationship with her mother. But then, as time went on, the disrespect, the hurtfulness, the things she had said to me. What I'm trying to understand as a father, why text something so cruel? Even if it was something you wanted to tell her or you needed to talk to her about, you why not... You can't talk to her. You can't talk to her. She go get loud and yell, just like now. Get loud and yelling I in your did. ear and hollering and screaming and everything. When you can't say nothing young, to her. When I was younger, I did. You know what I'm saying? But now that I got older, when he... When I tell him things that's true, 
and how he live his life and he ain't right, he hang up the phone. I tried to talk to him like an adult and he hangs up the phone. Ask my wife. I put her on a speakerphone and she She ain't been in the picture people. all our life, so she can only say what oh, recently well, she happened. Knows she, she can't hurt say you. all of this. Okay, she, she might have heard it, but it ain't been for years. I'd, I'd like, like to hear past from you. Please, with with Shan. You. I'd like to hear from you. She ain't relevant. Ma'am, say your name. Nicole McRoyal Burks. Miss Burks. Yes, ma'am. You've been with your husband for how many years? Three years. Three years now. Yes. And this young woman, Miss Brown, has asserted that she's his biological daughter, but he does not believe she is. What do you know about this situation? Well, I know he's been feeling this way since I've been with him. And he always had that doubt about her. And me, myself, I had doubts. She's a very beautiful lady, but she looks nothing mm -hmm. like him to me or the other kids. And she's very disrespectful. As you can see, I said nothing to her and she already started to disrespect me. But disrespect really has nothing to do with DNA. Now, now she came to my church one time. I put it to you just like this. She came to my church and, you know, she brought someone with her and I, and I just had a talk with her. And I, I told her, I said, no, I love you as a person, but what you do with your own life is your own business. That's how it all started, went into a tailspin because oh, listen, she didn't yeah, like he it. He talks about she, the church. She stuff. didn't like but it I because I, I didn't like go along with it. And even sung at the church for him. She this man called me and said, You can't even sing. You sing, you sing too loud. About that Long too. as I, I sure did get mad. He told me I couldn't sing and I'm just trying to sing for the God. Wow, this never ends. Looking I'm really just tired of him. And, and I just thought I said, him. you can come to my house, but, be my but, but your man can't come. I mean, your woman. I mean, I've I never mean, brought listen, nobody to your house. Mr. I never Burks, brought anybody to your Mr. house. Mr. Burks, yes, let me just ask you a point blank question. Is this about that you don't believe she's your biological child, or is this just about that you don't approve that she's gay? No, that's fine. That's fine, but I don't go along with that lifestyle because, you know, like I said, I'm a Christian man. You want to get married one time. You don't get married 10, 14 times. That's my business. You got nothing to do with it, that. Exactly. But it don't matter. At least I did marry. Marry Sarah Batista. I believe marriage is honorable. You married this woman two times. That's, That's all right. Time so what? How many times you been married? How many I, kids you got? It don't matter. It don't matter. Listen, I would like to hear from your witness, Miss Brown. Can you please stand, ma'am? State your name for the court. Shadon Burks, Your Honor. You are Mr. Um, Burks' daughter. Daughter. Yes, ma'am. And you are sitting with Miss Brown. So. Your Honor, I just don't believe that after 30 years, Mr. Burst could say that she's not our sister. When we grew up, when we were growing up, I was seven years old. He took me, he and my other sisters, and he introduced us as this is your sister. This is your sister. And from that time on, we, that's all we knew is each other to be sisters. And nobody ever told us different until she became, she, she came out of the closet. We have to love people. We can't mistreat them because of the choices that they make. God people doesn't mistreat us, us because of our choices. He loves us just the same. So, this yeah. is affecting the entire family, I presume. Yes, Your Honor, it, it is because, I mean, for you to, after 30 years, to say that my sister is not my sister. It's just not fair. I thank you for your testimony. You may be seated. We really need the results in this case. We do. Ron, I'm ready for the envelope. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. In the case of Burks versus Brown, when it comes to 30-year-old Laquata Brown, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Burks, you are the father. See, I told you, and you stay up there and do me like this. That what you gonna do? See, it's all about my lifestyle. But you know what, after this, he don't have to worry about me. I promise that he don't have to worry about me because if it took all this for you to do this to me... She called me on the phone before uh, we got here and talked no, to me. No. I wasn't nothing. No, I didn't. Mr. Burks, I just told you that that is your biological child. He still looks like he needs that's help. That's the way she treats me. Get his me. Can't but me. listen. She treats me like a stranger. Mr. Burke. Because that's how you treat me. Listen, listen. You're not the first man nor the last man or last parent to have a child that's just a firecracker. There's something in the way you approach her and the way you treat her. It sets her off. It just nabs at her side. You got a special child. 
She takes up a room. Can I just say one thing, Your Honor? Look, you keep talking to me, but you're not talking to her. Well, I think we're both hot-headed. I think... Talk I think, to her. I think, I think the problem is that we're both... She got a hot, hot temper. I got one. Somebody got to listen sooner or later. I love her. You know, I have always loved her. I have never stopped loving her. She know that. This is a start. Ms. Brown, I want you to take a breath to tell your father what you need to tell him. I know he don't like the way I live my life because he think it's the game. He just think that it's something like a phase or something. That's my life. That's how I live my life. And I just wish he'll understand that. That's the first halfway civil conversation we've had today between the two of you. There are a lot of issues you have to work through. I'm glad we could give you the answers you need so that the questions aren't out there in the back of his mind. And you have to understand what triggers people. Once one of you starts yelling, the other one pops off. And at that point, you all are just screaming. You're not communicating. You all have that in common. And now we have to learn how to speak and talk to one another another way. All right, let's start that today. Ms. Goddard, you and your mother claim the defendant, Damon Harrison, purposefully impregnated you to trap you, but has since avoided the responsibility of taking care of your daughter, Anila, since she was born. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. You're suing for a paternity test and for $900 for college expenses you lost when you were forced to drop out. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Harrison, you claim you've tried to get a DNA test for months because you know you are not a Nihilist father and today's results will clear your name. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so, Ms. Goddard, why do you believe that Mr. Harrison purposefully got you pregnant? Your Honor, I know that he purposely got me pregnant because he told me himself, Your Honor. Did you get her pregnant on purpose? Yeah, I got her pregnant on purpose, Your Honor. You did? Yes. And why? Because we were in love, we were planning to have a baby, but she didn't want to have it. She wanted to go to school. And... So, let me understand something. If you say you got her pregnant on purpose, why are we here? Why aren't you claiming, honoring, and taking care of this child? I know the child's not mine. Because... You say you know the child's not yours, and yet you also say you got her pregnant on purpose. <laughs> we were going together for a year. We were in love. So I decided, you know, I wanted to start a family. So I tried to start a family in which I assumed that this baby is mine or not. I don't know, to be honest. She cheated on me, basically. She cheated on me with another guy. A, a couple of my friends walk up to me and they tell me that, you know she was cheating on you since the beginning of everything, since we've been going together. So I wanted to know if this baby is mine or not. So you started hearing rumors? Yes. A lot of rumors. Not just one person, not two, but multiple. A lot. So I wanted to know if this baby is mine or not. Your Honor? Yes, Ms. Goddard. I admitted to Mr. Harrison that I had intercourse with another man as we were together, and he still proceeded through my pregnancy and the birth knowing that. So you admitted that you had had sex with someone else? Yes, I did. And he stayed with you? Yes, because he said he knew that was his child because he purposely did it, and he knows it. I don't think you all understand and that you can purposefully try to get somebody pregnant, but if you're sleeping with somebody else, too, it could be the other person's. <laughs> you understand that, right? Yes. You're saying, Ms. Goddard, this cost you the opportunity to go to college. Yes, it did, Your Honor. How? I also ha I have here the payment that I made for orientation and the supplies also that my mom spent for me to go to college. Jerome, may I see that, please? And here, Your Honor, here's a defer from my college stating that I had to leave and they were going to give me a chance to come back in another year, but because I, ha I got pregnant, I could not go, Your Honor. Jerome, hand me that other piece of evidence Ms. Goddard is handing you. This is, uh, an itemized list of college expenses, your dorm supplies, bedding, towels, personal care items, totaling $400 and then a summer orientation fee of $500, which totals $900. Correct, Your Honor. All the things you've bought getting ready for college. Yes. This is the proof that you were actually admitted into school, but they deferred your admission because you weren't able to go. Yes. You're asking for those expenses and those costs to be returned to you because you feel like you lost them 
because Mr. Harrison got you pregnant on purpose. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mom, this is really difficult for you. It's because very difficult. Your daughter was on her way to college. Absolutely. Not only was she on her way to college, my daughter had an extremely hard teen life. And she got in a lot of trouble in school. She learned her lesson. She turned her life around. She then went on to school, got on the principal's list, had honors classes, went forward to go to school, got accepted into Hartford. She paid her dues by taking responsibility for what she did, which he has lacked. He said, why you gotta go to college for? You could go to college right here. Just go to a regular um, public school or whatever and just get it done like that. He didn't want me to go on campus, Your Honor. He didn't want me to do better for myself. Your Honor, I don't remember saying any of that. All I know is, Your Honor, I know a lot of females that get pregnant and go to college. My cousin, okay. she went to college L let me just and say stayed this. on campus while she was pregnant. I heard a man say yes, he attempted to get you pregnant on purpose. What I also heard is you, a young woman, also say that I was sleeping around with him, but I also was sleeping around with another man, unprotected the man that could potentially be the child's father as well. If you were serious about getting your education, you wouldn't have been engaging in those activities. Because women, young girls that live with purpose, conduct yourself in a certain type of way, and that includes protecting yourself. Yeah, sure. He could not take away any opportunity you had unless you failed to protect yourself. Do you understand? Yeah, sure. Now, granted, if that was his idea of creating a family, he's a compulsive liar. Your Honor. He's a compulsive liar. Not only was she going on to do better, he, it, he also lied and said he'd been trying for months to get a DNA test, and I know that firsthand that that's also a lie, because I've been there. Your Honor, when we... they tried to do a, mm -mm, no, no. Go ahead. I've been there when she's tried to do it. I've heard phone calls. I've had to coach her coach her for trying to be there and be there for her child and not go down in the slump because he's not there to do what he's supposed to do. And because of that, I have to pick up the slack. I didn't get a hump, a bump, or a kiss in none of that. So it's not fair that I gotta do it and he lay up like he the man. The devil is a liar, no. You said you try to get her pregnant on purpose and then when she actually has the baby, because you hear rumors, you don't step up, you don't provide for the child? Your Honor, I was there when she gave birth. I stayed Late. the night. And then left. I stayed the night. And came back. Your Honor, I stayed, I stayed there, Your Honor. I had to we threaten you in... to come back. I called you on the phone and said, get your punk behind back here to this hospital right your now. Your Honor, that's after she had and the... he slept Your Honor, the that's time after here, she had the baby, Your Honor. And let's that's not talk about the birth the certificate when you when signed we were... it. You'd rather go get high with your cousins and your friends than come there and sign the birth certificate. Is that true, Mr. Your Honor, Harris? I Tell the truth. Tell the I truth that the Lord loves you, because you know you're overslept, lying. Your you Honor. overslept, Your Honor. I overslept, Your Honor. The and on the day that you were supposed to sign, sign the, the birth, birth certificate. certificate. Yes, and I have Did my son. Did you sign it? Did I sign the birth certificate? No. And to this date, you have not signed it? I haven't signed it. I cut the umbilical cord. Nobody never came up to me. After that, they moved Anila to the incubator where she was, you know, she was doing a little bad. They moved her there. A little? And, he wouldn't and, know because she never, wasn't there, Your Honor. Never, he wasn't Your, there at all. Your I watched Honor, my baby go from that's me right a there, cold set, and they had to throw her that's onto me. a warmer. That's me, Your Honor. Right there. Why she has But well, what happened afterwards? That, that, that you the first day. I'm what about to after that? It does not stop baby. there. It doesn't stop there. And it's not fair to her to be without her father because you're selfish. Your That's Honor, not fair I, to her. Your Honor, when I was born, my That's father passed fair. away when I was a baby. I have a son. I have a that's four year old son. Don't take care of him. I take either. care of my your son. Your mother takes I care of him. I pay child support for my your son. Your mother does everything. I take care of my son. Your mother does that. I take care of my son. Okay, no. all right, hold on. Go ahead, Mr. Harrison. They, how would they know if I'm taking care of my son? I was your girlfriend. We was in love, remember? Okay, you was at the house. Where were you at all the time? Watching your son when you were Where outside. were you at all the time? Tell the truth. All right, all right. Let's get back to the child in question. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, this does not add to our argument, and it only furthers questions in my mind, is if you were with a man that didn't take care of the child he already had, why would you have sex with a man unprotected where you could potentially get pregnant by him again? Yep. And expect anything different to happen? When 
did these people tell you that she was cheating? They told me after she had the baby. I told him myself. I admitted to him when I first found out I was pregnant. When I first told him, I didn't tell him the guy's name. He went through my phone another time, and that's how he found out the guy's name, Your Honor. I never found out the guy's name, Your Honor. I just found the text messages. You went through the phone? I went through yes. the phone, and I seen that she was talking to another guy, and they was talking about having sex, and they was talking about being together with each other. Was she... this during the window of conception? Your Honor, yes, it was. One day, one day Your okay. Honor, yes. But I was sleeping with him before and after. And Your Honor, how I know? I marked down on a calendar myself when I was sleeping with Mr. Harrison. Not only that, Your Honor, yes, I did have intercourse with someone else one time because Mr. Harrison had cheated and on me multiple times. it only takes one times. time, Your Honor. I just wanted him to understand how I felt while he was doing it to me, Your Honor. Yes, it was wrong, and I do realize that. What is this evidence you have? I have a calendar where I marked off all the days before and after, Your Honor, when I got conceived my baby. Thank you, Jerome. Mm -hmm. All of these dates you have circled... Yes, Your Honor. ...are dates that you were intimate without protection with Mr. Harrison. Yes, Your Honor. And then the baby was born on November 6th. Yes, Your Honor. When were you intimate with the other guy? On February 28th. So, February 28th... It was the 28th. weekend of my birthday, yes. So now, on February 28th is where you say you had sex with the other guy. Yes, Your Honor. How do you end up hooking up with this other guy? Because, Your Honor, as I stated, he has cheated multiple times. This was a friend of mine. I came to him and I confided in him and I started letting him know things that were going on. And me and this other gentleman, we had intercourse with each other and that's how it happened, Your Honor. How are you so certain Mr. Harrison is the child's biological father if you admittedly had sex with this other guy unprotected during the window of conception. Your Honor, because me and Mr. Harrison had sex multiple times unprotected throughout the day, Your Honor. It was nonstop. But you do acknowledge that there is a potential that this other guy could be your child's biological father. Yes, Your Honor, I'm well aware of that. So, when you were pregnant, did you tell the other guy that I'm pregnant and you may be my child's father? Yes, Your Honor. What was his response? He stopped talking to me. He wouldn't have no contact with me. So, ultimately, Ms. Goddard, you believe this man basically just ruined your child's life? Yes, I do. I believe that she also, like you said, had a choice in that. But I think for him to do it intentionally, which makes it worse, because not only did you do it intentionally, but you just walked away. You came, you dropped your luggage, you didn't even unpack, you left the responsibility on her to do your dirty work. That's not fair. That's not fair. And, and it, so... it, it bothers me more than anything because I get it. I get it. As women, yeah, we, we should do better because it's us. And they walk away and don't take the responsibility. I had her. I was 16 years old. And this is the last thing that I would want for her to have to go through the same thing. Because to me, I consider it to be a generational curse to go from child to child to child to have to deal with suckers like this. Excuse me, Judge. Sorry. You used a word that I could live with. <laughs> And so, what are your hopes today? I just want my daughter to know who her father is, and I want him to be there for her because I know what it's like to not have a father. And how about you, Mr. Harrison? I was raised without a father, too. My father passed away when I was a baby, and basically, I'm just trying to be a better guy. Just take no, care. No, don't be a better guy. I'm be, be a better I'm father. Trying to be, I'm and trying to be a father a to this baby if this baby is mine. Don't try. Do it. Do it. So, Ladies. you're saying... The loss of your father and living without your father in your life has affected you. Yes, my mother had to be my father. My mother had to raise me by herself. Fail. She has a father. He's not dead. He's not gone. My father is gone. So I want to know, can I be a father to this baby if it is mine? Do you know how to be a father? Yes, I know how to be a father. I take care of my son. I take my son to the store. I take him to the park. I do everything for my son. I got him shoes and everything. Just because my mother helps me, that's called helping. My mother helps me to take care right, of this baby. Can't tell you anything about his son. Anything about his son at all. Every time Shantaria was over at my house, Shantaria could tell you she was always in the basement. My son was always upstairs. Either I'm with her, taking care of her, rubbing on her belly. I'm spending time with her and not spending time more with my son. So I realized I needed to spend more time with my son. So I started doing that. I started spending time with my son. My mother goes outside. She does what she wants to do. Simple as that. 
And so ultimately, you saw the void not having a father left in your life. And you're attempting to break that yes. cycle yes. with your son. And will continue to try to do that, if I'm correct, if it's determined that Anila is your daughter. Yes. I will continue to do that if Anila is my and daughter. And if she is not your biological daughter. I will go to continue taking care of my son. Okay. I think it's time for the results and then I will rule on the lawsuit. Thank you, Jerome. Mm -hmm. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Goddard versus Harrison, when it comes to eight month old, Anila Harrison, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Harrison, you are her father. Now you know. Yep, and I will be taking care of her, as a real man should. So despite the arguing that has transpired today, the three of you have something in common, and that's Anila. So from here, you've got to use that same energy that you use to cut each other down. You've got to figure out how to now build Anila up. So, Ms. Goddard, you were suing for the paternity test, but also because you felt Mr. Harrison had prevented you from the opportunity to go to college by impregnating you on purpose. You haven't proven today that this man said in his mind, I'm gonna purposefully get her pregnant for the specific purpose of keeping you from your education That's and that college true. opportunity. And let's be honest, even if he said he did, there was another man on deck. So for the reasons I stated, judgment is for the defendant. Ms. Martin, you say your ex, Mr. Damphier, is a cruel and petty little man who refuses to fully accept that he is the father of your four-year-old daughter, Amaya. You claim Mr. Damphier's callous indifference towards your daughter has gone on for far too long and you intend to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Damphier, you say Miss Martin was a serial cheater with a stable of men in her rotation. You say you have evidence that proves Miss Martin was stepping out on you and there is no way you are Amaya's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Martin, I'll start with you. Why do you say Mr. Damphier is callous and cruel? He treats my daughter like crap. He's also played favoritism. Amaya has told me on numerous times that she's sad that her dad don't love her. Oh. She did a video testimony of how she fails. She did? Yes. And you submitted that to the yes, court? Yes, I did. Let's take a look. That is mean, because he always makes me sad. How does that make you feel? He always makes me sad. I'm mad because my dad always makes me sad. That's awful. Yeah. And that's what she repeats to you over and over again. Yeah, and then I tell him, like, you need to change your attitude towards her and treat her like she's yours. Only reason why I treat her that way is Amaya's like more better. I got other kids, she's like disobedient. She's mis she misbehaves, so I gotta treat her accordingly. Like, I don't just treat her so any way. She, but I, Ms. Martin is saying, Mr. Damn Fear, you're playing favorites because of your paternity doubt. You're not giving Amaya the attention and love that she needs and deserves. I feel I'm not the father, Amber's always messaging guys, um, she texts guys all the time. So I feel I'm not the father, I mean. You are her father and you know it. She looks just like you. I've never cheated on you, Anthony, and you know So that. what was the nature of your relationship with Mr. Damphier? Miss Martin, can you tell me that? We started out as friends and then we eventually became serious. And through our relationship, I discovered he wasn't honest. He was texting other females. He was talking to other females. He had six other girlfriends at the time. Six? You were six. cheating on me. You, had, you were always messaging people. 
Yeah, and like I realized the car that he showed up in to at my house was another female's. So, Mr. Danfear, did you drive another girl's car to Miss Martin's house? Yeah, that was my friend's car. Uh, we wasn't serious at the time. Like, we was just uh, having sex, so I did. I did. So you admit you are a cheater? No, I'm not a cheater. Six girlfriends? We were just basically having sex. You and Miss Martin? Yeah. Well, what about you and the girl whose car it was? That was my friend. So your testimony is, is that Miss Martin is a cheater? Yeah. Even though we pretty much established that you running for president in that club. <laughs> no, Amber's a cheater. I got multiple reasons why I think I'm not the father. She um, always messaging guys. Like I said, I have a, a for one instance, she um, came home late and I was messenger calling her like we're, she never didn't respond. And then when she come home, her hair all messed up, smelling like sex. Oh. And um, wait, I, what? I, I respond like, where you been at? She didn't have no proper excuse for where she been. How long were you trying to reach her that day? Over an hour and a half, and nothing till she got there. She didn't call me back, no text, nothing. So, Miss Martin, you do have a smile on your face. I you, do. You're kind of smiling. <laughs> you got a smirk. No, he's crazy. Like these are all his insecurities. I've never cheated on Anthony. I am smarter than that to come home smelling like sex when I know he's there. Well, <laughs> she says she's smarter than that. She would have taken her shower before she came home. Yes. <laughs> what do you have to say to that, Mr. Damn Fear? That's not the only... There's more... There's more text messages. I have a text right here. Um, and I what? have other text How messages. How did you find the text messages? I, well, she was going through my phone, so I got mad and just went through her phone. Okay, so what'd you and see? She's messaging guys. I have evidence right here. Um, Let but... me see the evidence. Jerome, will you pass it to me, please? Certainly. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. You found messages. Other man says, come pull up and sit on my face. Oh. I want blank, blank for breakfast. Oh. <laughs> Ms. Martin says, where are you at? Mom's same house. Other man says, "Yup." So you coming? Miss Martin says, "Yup, on the way. Be there in 20." Ooh. What's that emoji down there? No, see, that was just conversation. I've never <laughs> cheated on him. That's not conversation. Like I never cheated on him. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I was thinking about going over there because after reading his text messages and stuff, I wanted to hurt him. But I decided not to go. And like I said, I've never cheated on Anthony. But at 8.48, he asked you to sit on his face and by 8.55, you was on your way in 20 minutes. <laughs> that, I mean, that's seven minutes. Yeah. That was seven it minutes was exchanged and you had made a decision. It was just conversation. That's not you don't conversation. even look like, like you're there's... telling the truth when you're saying it. I know. It looks bad, but I've never cheated on you. There's more. Like, there's even more text messages. There's more? Me. Yes, there's more. You brought them? Yeah, I did. Let me see those, Mr. Damfear. There you go, sir. <laughs> you got another text message exchange. This, the other man says, good morning, baby. And Ms. Martin says, morning. Another man says, I want to see you again, love. And then Ms. Martin responds, when? She said again. That means, like, you already seen him, so what do you mean? He's somebody from my past. <laughs> He's somebody from my past. When me and Anthony was not together, he's somebody from my past. I've never cheated on you, and you know that. But why are you entertaining these men, then? Because he wasn't giving me the attention that I wanted. So you admit these are the exchanges yes. you're having with men. This, that but was it. But you're saying from these exchanges, you've never gone never. to see one of them. Never, never. And Mr. Danfear, you believe this is when she was cheating and this yes. is when Amaya was conceived. Yeah, around the same time. Well, let's figure out if it is the same time. Let me get my conception calculator. 
When was Amaya born? October, October 8th. Yeah, 2015. October 8th? 2015. 2015, all right. Then we'll press calculate. Date of intercourse, January 7th, January 22nd, 2015. Correct. So if we go back to the text message exchange, the dates on those, the first set is January 3rd, and then the second set is January 29th and February 1st. That is right in the window of conception. Exactly. It is, Same time. but I've never cheated on you, and you know that. Like, you are Maya's dad. That's you like a broken record, Ms. Martin, because I've never cheated on you, and you know that. He doesn't know that. Well, I've explained to him. So, Ms. Martin, take me to the moment you found out you were pregnant. When I found out I was pregnant, I let Anthony know I was pregnant. And his reaction, he was not thrilled. I had other kids. I got, like, I had two other kids at that time. Okay, we were having sex without using condoms. What happens when you have sex without using condoms? A baby can occur. I never finished. Every time we used to have sex, I used to pull out for a whole year. Okay. And you never got pregnant. That is not foolproof birth control. <laughs> no birth control is. But that's one of the worst methods. Yes, he denied her immediately. As soon as I told him, he was like, okay, well, whatever. Because I'm not the father. You are her father, Anthony. She looks just like you. Can you tell the court how that made you feel, having your first child with a man you thought would want the child as much as you did? It made me feel like crap. Like, I wish I've never met him. And you've had to live with that as you've been raising your daughter by yourself. Yes. How and, hard has it been? I mean, he's there. He takes care of her, but he mistreats her. He plays favoritism. And it affects That's her. That's not true, Amber. You play favoritism. It's not true. So, where are you all in a relationship now? Are you still together? No. I don't know. He's with me when he wants to be. We're not together. Okay, we're not together. <laughs> are you still having sex? Yeah, we had sex last night. <laughs> we'll see them in nine months, Jerome. <laughs> They'll be back. Book them now. So you all still having sex? Yes. And you say you are on and off, and he says you're off. Yeah, he says that, but then his actions is otherwise. How? You say he's mistreating your child. Yeah, he mistreats her. Well, how do you lay down with a man who mistreats your child? I... Good question. Good question. No, I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah. What, what day is that sexy? No, no more. All right. So, Mr. Damfear, besides the text messages, can you explain to the court your other doubt? But Amber tells me I'm not the father of the baby. I, I have said that. She told me. Being spiteful. Told him I have. not the father. And then I showed him and a then random... she showed me a picture of a guy and said, this is Amaya's dad. Oh, and they my look, they God. Look more alike than, they look more alike than, than me and her. Like, they, they resemble each other more than we do. And you admit you did it, Miss Martin. I did. So I was... what are you trying to get from this? And I apologized to him for... That was disrespectful. I did that out of spite. Like, he had really made me mad after mistreating my child. I told him, you're not her father anymore. We don't need you. And we don't. So if you tell a man that he's not the father, how do you expect him not to doubt after that? I mean, you... I've heard of... Women, that's bad enough. We always say you cannot unring that bell when a woman says, uh, you're not the father anyway. Well, the man's never gonna forget that. I don't care 365 days, 1,000 days from now, 10 years from now, he'll never forget the day you said you're not the father unless he has a DNA test that proves what the truth is. Yeah. But I have a never, never, you hear me? Have we, Jerome? Ever. In seven years in this courtroom, had a woman pull up a picture and say, not only are you not the father, he is, but it be a fictitious man, like somebody you don't even know. I didn't know him. It was a random picture on Facebook. I was scrolling and I told him that this is her dad and he knows that. She looked like the ex, too, your ex. I've never, I have not messed with him since 2012. And that's what I keep, like, 
coming down to. You are her father, and you and know it. And then what about the guy that asked you to sit on his face? <laughs> How about him? I don't deal with him. Like, when me and Anthony split up, yeah, I talked to him. And that was that. And he was messing with other people when we split up. But once me and Anthony established that we were serious, all commu- like, all of that stopped. Like, sexual-wise, all of it stopped. I was only dealing with him, and he knows that. I don't know. Well, it, I'm telling you, you're the only person that I slept with. I have not cheated on you. Were you hoping to get caught with the messages? Were you trying to make them jealous? I was, honestly. I wanted him to see those. I wanted him to see how it felt. But I didn't get a reaction out of him. The reaction that I was looking for. You haven't been getting a reaction all day. Yeah. He's unbothered. Yes. Very. I think the only way we're going to move forward is to get the results. Jerome? <clears throat> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Martin versus Damphier, when it comes to four-year-old Amaya Damphier, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Damphier, you are the father. Exactly. Like, he knows that. I'm sorry. Sorry, Amber. I appreciate the fact that you apologize, Mr. Damphier. But you're gonna have to apologize to another person, too. And I see the way you're looking at her and the emotion in your eyes that you feel some level of regret about that. What are you feeling? Just feel, I just feel bad for her. I just feel heartbroken that I haven't been there like I should, should have. Look at this video. That is mean, cause he always made me sad. He always made me sad. You see that? Yeah. Four, that is tragic. Do you understand? Yes, yes, Your Honor. And that goes for you too, Miss Martin. That video? And then you was with him last night? Yeah. Girl, what the oil folks say, you going out the world ass backwards. (laughs) That don't make no kind of sense. It doesn't. 